My name is David Britton. I'm the um, director of Adams Auctioneers in Dublin, but also involved in the AVA Gallery in Clandy Boy Estate, um, just outside Bangor. Jared Dillon um, was born off the Falls Road on Lower Clonard Street. Um, he's probably one of Northern Ireland's best known painters um, from the 1940s through until the 1970s, when unfortunately he died in 1971. The current exhibition, which is called Jared Dillon Art and Friendships, is probably the biggest retrospective of his work um, since 1972, when there was a big retrospective just after he died. And it encompasses all forms of his art, um, including sort of tapestry, watercolour, as well as the majority of the pictures are oil paintings. I think one of the most significant things about the exhibition is that everything um, that, is on, that is on show here um, are, have been borrowed from private collections as opposed to public collections. So we have had probably about 60 lenders altogether and from the length and breadth of the country, both from Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland. And it gives the public access to works that aren't normally accessible. This isn't a selling show, it is a loan exhibition. And as I said, there are some works, like for instance, the Island Man here on our right hand side, that, has, that have never been exhibited in public before. It was bought in the 1950s by the current owner directly from Jared. It wasn't even exhibited in his own lifetime and yet it's sort of an iconic work from his Inish Lacken period. Well, probably you, you start with um, Saturday Night on the Falls Road, which is this very colourful, probably romantic view of the Falls Road in Belfast, because you have all the wonderfully coloured shops and the girl swinging on the post and everything else. And this would be the very, very early period, and you've got the Aran period here, so th they would be sort of his earliest works. He moved fairly quickly along onto... Uh, he started going down to Connemara, He'd been in Connemara in 1939, but he, he started going down to Connemara more in the late 1940s. And so the vast majority of the works in this main gallery would be from the late 40s through until the late 1950s. So they, they encompass sort of a 10-year period. Um, but they would cover both the Belfast period, then the, after the war he became involved in what was called the Demolition Squad over in London, which was rebuilding London after the Blitz. So you have pictures like the tea break here, which is basically... Now, what's significant about the tea break is actually Barr, the man, is holding, I think, the pot of tea, or is he holding the pot of tea? There doesn't seem to be very much tea involved. It's very much a card-playing um, exercise. But I think the strength of colour, and I think if you walk into this gallery, I think it is colour that it, everything seems so fresh, um, considering that they were painted 50 and 60 years ago. Um, you've got wonderful sort of works like the confessional, and this would feature a self-portrait of himself, his mother, who was a very pious um, woman, sort of on the right-hand side. And you just wonder what is Jared Dillon confessing to the priest, because his ear is quite enlarged. Um, but again, it's, this is nearly like a tapestry um, in the way it's being composed and the richness of colour that you find in it. After the... He went down to Connemara, as I said, he was... Victor Waddington had taken him on in the Victor Waddington Galleries in Dublin, and he went and encouraged him to paint in Connemara. So he took a cottage on the, just right beside the schoolhouse on Inishlaken, which is just off Roundstone, and he stayed there for a year. And during that year, he lived very simply, but he had lots of artist friends coming down to visit him. Uh, so you had artists like James McIntyre, um, George Campbell, Nana Reid, all came and visited for various periods. And actually, James McIntyre's experiences were written um, about much later in a book called Three Men on an Island. After that, you move on into the sort of what we call the Poirot period. Um, and that has to do with... His, unfortunately, his brothers all died in their 1950s, so the most iconic work would be called The Brothers. And basically, you have here the sort of the three brothers that have predeceased him in various stages of decay. You have the artist himself depicting himself as a puero and just listening to the earth and listening to them. And he had this premonition that he was going to die young. And that is, unfortunately, he did die when he was 55. But in here, in this a small gallery, you have also Masquerade, which represented Ireland in the Guggenheim exhibition in 1960, which is again another departure, very abstract, now, if I bring you just... So, as we're wandering down the back corridor, uh, we have some of the Puerto period. And again, you, you see here on Green Evening, 
the, the sort of spirits of his brothers are floating in the sky. And he sort of, again, this other picture called The Long Road was after his brother Joe had died and it was the long road back. He died in London and the wrong, long road back to, well, I think he's back to Ireland, but I think in his own mind it was back to Connemara. And then the totally and utterly odd things, he did keep on experimenting in life. And these are works that I know have been, that, that people find very, very significant because he made pictures out of found objects. And basically Glovebird was made out of a lady's glove. And it, they were very, very modern for their time. That was first exhibited in 1962. And again, in the Dublin exhibition, we had some people who had adju adjudicated during that exhibition. And they found it sort of caused either wonderfully exuberant sort of responses or complete and utter dismay at what exactly he was doing. And in that same vein, you would have Moneybird. Now, both of those had been bought by Sir Basil Goulding, who was a great patron of the arts um, in, in Dublin at the time, in the early 60s. And then in the back gallery, again, to put his work into context, we've included um, works by his friends and colleagues. So, Nanny Jellis opened his first re retrospective, or his first exhibition in 1942, um, and she was a great influence on his life. So this is a very, very strong work um, from the 1920s. But we also include his great friends, George Campbell, and we've, we've got a wonderful a procession in Andalusia, that, which would remind you of what Jared would have painted down in Roundstone, because he did all these sort of processions down in Roundstone. Nano Reed was a fantastic friend of his, and he used to spend a lot of time with her in Drogheda, and they used to go and visit the monastic sites. Again, the, the quality of work that we've got on display representing Nano, this represented Ireland at the Venice Biennale in 1950. So the quality of even the Friends work is quite significant. The work we used on the front cover of the catalogue, which is the wonderful uh, iconic self-portrait um, with cigarettes, again, that has never been exhibited in public before, so it's a first time. So that sort of gives you an indication of the significance of the works. So they, these aren't works that you, you can go and see in the Ulster Museum or anywhere else. They are works that you have a one-off opportunity of actually seeing. I think he's just, he has a, a certain popularity among a certain group of collectors. Um, like, I mean, he is regarded as one of Northern Ireland's most prominent painters. He was very involved in the Irish exhibitions of living art. Uh, he exhibited from the very first exhibition of living art in 1943 and was on the committee from 1950 for um, over 20 years. Uh, he had a great involvement in Irish art and also then the group that he formed around him which included George Campbell, Dan O'Neill, um, Colin Middleton, they sort of become, it became the Ulster unit and were or the Ulster boys and again they were the most significant um, painters of their time. In the, the 1950s and 60s they were regarded as the stars. Maybe their star has slightly waned at this stage and this hopefully this exhibition will go and make it a rediscovery and, and make people understand that maybe he is more important um, than they probably had previously thought. Um, unfortunately, this, this show is actually coming to a close next week, um, but we do have a late night opening um, this Friday the 23rd until 8 o'clock. Um, it's open this Saturday from 11 until 5. Um, it's open then from Tuesday to Thursday of next week, um, which is Thursday the 29th, again 11 to 5 daily. Um, so do come along. And after that, our next um, mix show, which will include works by Gerard Dillon as well as others, um, opens on the 4th of September and runs for 10 days.